Welcome to part 3 of a series of videos describing how to perform chip seek analysis using Galaxy. In this part I am going to describe how to perform the mapping of the reads to the correct reference genome. By correct genome I mean not only the cor correct species to match the sample but also the sequence version. As genome assemblies are added to and corrected over time different versions or freezes are made. Choosing which version of a genome to use can be dependent on many factors including matching other data in the lab or just choosing the latest version. But it is important to choose the right version at the beginning of a project as the entire downstream of analysis may have to be repeated. The problem is, is that the genome coordinates used to describe where features are in the genome such as genes, can differ between one build and another, maybe by as much as tens of thousands of bases. The decision of which software to use to map the reads can depend on whether you have paired or single-ended reads, and that decision has pros and cons. And I'll describe some of those issues later in this talk. After that I will then describe how to run Bowtie in Galaxy and some of the post filtering steps that are required to use the map reads in downstream analysis. My mapping program of choice is either Bowtie or Bowtie 2 depending on whether I am using long or short single ended or paired end reads. The URLs for the two pieces of software can be found here. So let's consider the implications of using single end or paired end reads. In single ended reads we are just sequencing one end of the DNA from 5' prime to 3'. Prime. Now if the reads are relatively short, which is to say 50 bases or less, then Bowtie version 1 is particularly suited for this. It is said on the website that it can be more sensitive than Bowtie 2 for short reads. Now how does this affect uh, the peak calling? Well the peak calling software is called MAX, M-A-C-S. So when you use single end reads, Max must make a guess as to what the true fragment length of the DNA uh, it, and it does this via a process called cross correlation. For paired end sequencing, the start and end of every DNA fragment is sequenced. Now, for relatively long uh, fragments or runs of sequencing, for example 100 bases or 70 bases, Bowtie version 2 is thought to be more sensitive. Now the downside of paired end sequencing is that you effectively pay double for your sequencing because you're sequencing the forward and reverse strand of every fragment. It also takes longer. However, one of the benefits is that when these paired sequences are applied to Max, it specifically knows how long every fragment of DNA is, and therefore it can more accurately determine the mean fragment length. Before I go through describing how to run Bowtie on Galaxy, I'm just going to take a moment to describe differences in running Bowtie for single ended short reads and Bowtie 2 for paired end long reads. So for single ended and short reads, for example 50 bases, I would use Bowtie and I use the default parameters. This is a, a short seed region of 28 bases with up to two mismatches allowed. 
However, I additionally set the flag minus M1 and this means that it only reports reads that uniquely map to the genome, that is, one read only maps to one location. Now at the moment, the reads that I get from our HiSeq sequencer are paired end and 101 bases. Now this necessitated moving to Bowtie 2. Firstly, because Bowtie 2 runs better with long reads, and secondly, because it has better control of paired end mapping. However, I came into difficulty because the minus M1 flag no longer existed. And after some discussion and research, it became clear that the desire to find uniquely mapped reads was possibly not helpful. And it became clear that another filtering strategy was needed. Therefore, I run Bowtie 2 using default parameters, but then after mapping, I check the reads to see whether they are concordant, which is to say the reads are in a uh, forward and reverse orientation, no more than 500 bases apart. But additionally, Instead of worrying whether the reads are uniquely mapped, I look to see whether the reads are of good mapping quality. And both concordancy and the mapping quality can be checked using the SAM tools, uh, the SAM tools program view. The flags are shown here, minus F2 and minus Q30. So at the end of paired end mapping now, I'm reasonably confident that the reads are good quality and concordant.